This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. So uh, we actually host the Boston WordPress site on HostGator. Um, they have uh, easy one-click install. It really is a core. It's affordable hosting. Um, if you're going to sign up with uh, HostGator, use our discount code Boston WP Meetup. Um, these. Uh, I believe these slides will be up so that you guys can grab this code. If not, we can, we'll have it on the website for you somewhere. But write it down. It's an awesome code. Cheaper stuff. It's on the and meetup look- side. I'm sorry? It's up on the meetup side. Oh. Yes, the code is on the meetup side as well. <coughs> and if you're looking for slightly more robust professional WordPress hosting, recently we've um, generously gotten some additional sponsorship from WP Engine. Um, is the pizza thanks to them this month? It is. So if you're enjoying the pizza, thank WP Engine for that. Um, they are a very uh, sort of high feature premium WordPress host that gives uh, a little bit more functionality catered directly towards serving a WordPress site. And you can use the WP Meetup Boston 2013 code for a free month of hosting on a personal plan there. So thanks to them for the sponsorship of the group as well. And uh, next month we'll have a couple of free accounts to give away and some Louis Pangen uh, t shirts if you guys come back. You have to come back though. <laughs> That's how they get you. Um, Again, we are the Boston WordPress Meetup. If you're not familiar with us, we have a website at bostonwp.org. On that website, we post the minutes, slides, and um, thanks to the generosity of Tom and Rekha Beach, the videos for these talks as well. So if you miss a talk, or if you want to go back and watch a previous session, um, you can go and uh, check it all out on bostonwp.org. We also now have jobs boards. So we have working job boards now. So I know for a while we're asking people to use the forums, and then we would have everybody call out the various jobs they had available. Um, <coughs> what we're going to do as we move forward is I'm going to be pushing people to the job board submission form as often as possible. If you list your job there, you will mention it here, and we may retweet it and then do all that stuff. Um, but we want to take a minute or two right now. If you do have a WordPress uh, position available, uh, stand up. Uh, talk a bit about the position, and be sure afterwards to go to bostonwp.org and submit your position so that it's on the site. So anybody can raise your hand if you have a position, stand up and, uh, yeah. Anything from you need a theme done to you want to hire a full-time developer, so. So if anything does come up, uh, check the meetup boards. If you're a developer looking for work, check the development boards. Um, we have much ideas around that, so right now it's kind of the bare bones of what you need for a job board, so keep an eye on that, and uh, hopefully it becomes something pretty cool. Additionally, we do have, as we mentioned a second ago, uh, forums on the site. Um, still trying to sort of build the community around there, so if you're interested, in, if you have questions around how to do something with... <coughs> So yeah, the, the, job, the, the forums are basically, uh, if you guys have any general WordPress questions, questions about the meetup, uh, general just water cooler conversation, <coughs> the people you've met you know, at the meetup, um, all that can happen there. Uh, we only launched it a few months ago, so it's relatively new, so feel free to dive in. Anything goes uh, to a point, uh, I'll be in there moderating. But you know, it's, it's a pretty friendly place, just don't spam us. We all know that opinions from Boston are better opinions, so feel free to, to use us instead of any of those silly global reach boards that they have, like on WordPress.org. And, and we have a GitHub account. Uh, we say soon because we have ideas for it. Um, there are things there, thanks to Kadam and uh, a few other contributions from other members. So if you have ideas for community projects that are WordPress-based, reach out to us, and we can get it up on Boston WP GitHub. Um, we have some cool ideas for that as well. So like, reach out to us if you guys have ideas, and we can turn that into something awesome as well. So um, again, uh, these are the we are. My name is uh, K. Adam White. This is John Bishop. We are some of the coordinators of the Boston WordPress Meetup Group. This group was founded a while ago by a fine gentleman named James Coletti, who has made the mistake of going out west. Um, until he <laughs> inevitably returns east, we are running the group. Uh, Kurt Ng, who is not able to be here tonight. Tom and Rayco, who are handling the video, um, Eric, Jesse, and um, Mel Choice, and Kelly Dwan, one of our speakers tonight, are the other hosts and coordinators. So if you have any questions, any concerns, anything that you can think that we could do better, feel free to reach out to any of us at any time. We're going to be um, here at the meetups and are available online through the meetup site as well. Uh, on the social media side of things, we have a Facebook page. Um, we're going to be doing more with that just as far as us pushing content there. So. Please feel free to push content there yourselves and check in on it. 
we have a pre-active Twitter account. So like I said, if you guys want to tweet today, just include the hashtag BostonWP. We'll try to retweet it from the BostonWP account, just so we can get more uh, activity on there. Uh, also, we have a YouTube channel now with, with all of our Boston WordPress videos. We used to be on Blip, but thanks to Tom, we have everything in YouTube now. Um, it's a lot easier to search to find and easier to put into WordPress. So uh, check that out, like all the videos, subscribe everywhere. Um, and we also have a Google Plus, because everyone has Google Plus. Uh, post things there, we're going to figure out what we're going to post there eventually. Um, there is some stuff, but uh, it's just another place that we exist. And we are going to continue existing in this place as well. We have spots here at Microsoft Nerd reserved all the way through September. Um, I believe that we're aiming generally for the last Monday of the month. Um, check the meetup, um, meetup.bostonwp.com for the specific dates. I believe we posted all of the dates that we've reserved there, even if the topics are still TBD. And uh, remember that we start at 6.30 now and not 7. So uh, we're, we're trying to get a lot of the sessions done up front so we have more networking time after the fact. Because we have to be out of here sharply at 9 o'clock and we hate kicking everybody out. So uh, 6.30 in the future, um, hope we can get these things moving a lot, a lot faster. And if a couple hours on a Monday is not enough time to talk about WordPress for you, we have scheduled WordCamp Boston 2013, which is the um, WordPress conference that we host here in the city. It's going to be on October Friday, October 25th through Sunday the 27th. It's going to be located located here at Nerd, and um, <coughs> it's going to be awesome. So we hope to see you there. So yeah, uh, we have a couple other meetups in the area. Um, there's one up in Manchester, New Hampshire, if you're around. Um, you can talk to Jonathan if you have uh, any questions about that. And there's another one in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, one of our other organizers helps with that. Jesse, he's not here right now, but uh, the Providence, Rhode Island meetup is actually another popular one. They have their own bird camp, so check that one out if you're uh, near the south area of Massachusetts. Uh, so also this weekend, um, we have a beginner and intermediate workshop. I believe we have five slots available in each session. Um, we have a three-hour beginner workshop, a three-hour intermediate workshop. Saturday, June 1st, we have some flyers up here if you guys are interested, or you can speak to Tom and Rico in the back. Um, it's a really kind of comprehensive workshop. We've broken it down into two sessions now, so it's easier to comprehend and easier to find your skill level. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Um, there's a bunch of other things going on uh, at the event, so it's, it's well worth it. Uh, they've done uh, three or four of them now, and it's a great, great time. So that was sixty dollars. Sixty dollars a class for the for the workshops. So if you only do three hours. Yep. And I guess um, any other questions, uh, Tom and Rico, and we have uh, other okay. Any other questions? So we're we're going to get started. Uh, in between uh, sessions or talks, we're going to have a little raffle for the T-shirts. So if you haven't. Uh, put your name in yet. Now's your last chance because I'm going to take the bag away so no one gets to put their name in twice. And we are going to be starting this evening with um, our friend from New Hampshire, Jonathan May, um, who is going to be talking about an introduction to child themes, how to make a good theme even better. So. Hey, everybody. How you all doing? Um, welcome to a somewhat sparse meeting that I'm used to being at. At any rate, glad uh, those of you who are here are here. My name is Jonathan Ney. As mentioned earlier, I'm the co-organizer of the Manchester WordPress Meetup Group, which has just sort of resuscitated in the last few months. And I'm a WordPress uh, developer and uh, also <coughs> teach WordPress. So what we're going to talk about tonight, I'm going to jump right in, is uh, introduction to child themes. Um, we're going to get just a, sort of the bare minimum to uh, of information to get you started because this is a, a big topic. You, you're not going to walk out of this talk uh, and be able to call yourself a theme developer if you ever uh, aspired to that. But you will know sort of enough to be dangerous and enough to learn what you need to know more about in order to be really good at it. Um, and you, you'll learn what you need to know in order to do some useful things. So uh, with that in mind, let's just dive right in here. So. Uh, So uh, the agenda tonight, uh, we're going to have a brief section on themes demystified. Hopefully everybody in the room here knows what a theme is, but maybe you don't know very much about sort of what really comprises a theme. You haven't actually sort of opened the, uh, the hatch to look down into uh, what stuff is 
um, is in that theme folder. Um, and we'll just get a, a quick look at that. And then we'll get into, you know, different ways that you can change the look of a theme. Uh, child themes are one way. There are other ways, which you're probably aware of, theme settings and so forth. Um, but we'll talk about sort of why a child theme presents uh, uh, other opportunities and more power than uh, the ways that you're uh, perhaps used to modifying the look of your site uh, in terms of your theme. Then we'll get really specifically into what is a child theme, what comprises a child theme, and why would you create a child theme in the first place. And then we'll actually go through an example of creating a very simple child theme in three easy steps and uh, get just a little bit into modifying templates with child themes, which is sort of a more advanced topic. Uh, it's good to know that it's there. It, if you're not a PHP coder, uh, you're probably not going to be doing a lot of this uh, right away. You can probably do a little tweaks uh, in modifying templates. But, um, so we're just going to give you an idea of what's, what's out there and uh, how to dig deeper. And that's the next to the last topic here. Is, is actually some resources you can look at how to dig deeper into uh, various um, uh, things, um, you know, sort of subtopics and, and learning more about CSS and PHP if you don't already know that and a number of other things. So, first thing we're going to do is look at, does anybody recognize this theme? There's a giveaway on the slide. It's 2012. Uh, so this is your out of the box 2012 theme in a, you know, obviously a very sort of simplistic, uh, you know, out of the box implementation of WordPress. So there's uh, there's one version of 2012. Let's look at another version. Here's another version. What's different about this? Background. The background of the of the content area is a different color. What else? Uh, font. The font of the headings is different. And one other, maybe more subtle thing. Yeah, the back. This this background area is behind the content. I'll I'll tell you right now. Is that all the uh, the headings are forced to all uppercase. So these two screenshots were taken from the same site, only using two different versions of the theme, the original 2012 theme, which doesn't have that um, forced uppercasedness in the headings, and this one, which does, and also has the, um, uh, the different font uh, for the headings. So how did, we, how did we do this? This is really the, the example that we're going to use to drive discussion. So, <clears throat> before we get into that, um, let's um, demystify a little bit about what themes are. So, you all know that the theme establishes the look and the basic functionality of WordPress site. That's right, a, a quote out of something, some documentation. And, but what really is a theme? Well, what, what comprises a theme is it's essentially a collection of files. Uh, it's PHP files. PHP is a, is a, a computer language, a server-side language. Um, and all those files have PHP as the file name extension. A theme must um, also um, must have at least an index.php file at a bare minimum, but most themes have many more than that. If, if you have looked into uh, a theme, uh, the theme files for any any given theme, you probably see header.php and footer.php and sidebar.php and functions.php and so forth. But the index.php is the only one that's absolutely required. Um, and the theme typically has uh, a number, uh, at least one CSS file, the one that's called style.css. And many of you have probably seen that. There could be other. Um, uh, uh, CSS files as well, and a theme could also have other files, such as image files that are particular to that theme. Uh, you know, a lot of themes have like default header images and things like that. 
you know, Java, JavaScript files and language files. We're not going to talk about those items directly today in the example, but they do exist, and they are things that could be modified, again, potentially uh, via child. So where do these files reside? You probably, if you look at all under the covers of WordPress, you'll see this directory, wp-content slash themes. And uh, by convention, the subdirectory uh, for each theme in that, um, in that themes directory, there's a subdirectory for a, each given theme that's actually been installed on your site. So just to reinforce that, I'm looking at um, my installation of WordPress that's on my locally hosted site here. I've got this particular instance. So here's WP content. These are all the files at the high level. And then these uh, folders, WP content is the one that contains the themes uh, subdirectory. And in here, there's another uh, subdirectory for each one of the themes uh, that is installed on my site. Okay? So, so are themes totally demystified now? Perhaps not. But let's keep going anyway. So what are the different ways that you can change the look of a theme? So everybody here probably, if you've done any WordPress at all, you know that you can modify the theme configuration settings provided in the dashboard. Um, when you install a theme, it might have a theme options um, uh, submenu under the appearance. Um, it could have uh, its um, certain themes when you install them actually create a main menu on the dashboard. Um, and <clears throat> the problem though with this approach by using these theme settings is at least some themes have, and, and I, would, I think it's fair to characterize it as most themes actually have very few settings that you can control when you compare what you can do with those settings to all the ways that you might possibly want to manipulate uh, a theme. There are some very flexible themes that have wide range of settings. They have a sort of tabbed menu, and you can uh, have a whole bunch of settings for the header or the fonts or backgrounds and things like that. Um, but even those don't provide complete control over what you might want to do to modify the theme. So this is the typical way that a beginning WordPresser would um, uh, approach modifying their theme, but they're going to hit a wall pretty quickly with most themes out there. <clears throat> Some themes, in fact, it seems to me it's a growing number of themes, have something called a custom CSS tab. Uh, and a couple of these that I'm, uh, I'll mention here. Uh, custom community is a relatively new theme, and it actually has a tab. You can go into the tab in the theme settings and put in custom CSS code. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, another one uh, that I saw recently is called Attitude, re relatively uh, uh, new theme. And it seems a growing number of themes are, are allowing you to do that. And there are plugins that allow you to uh, also add custom CSS. Um, Jetpack, which is the WordPress.com uh, sort, of, uh, uh, sort of cafeteria style little feature set. Um, has a custom CSS tab that you can um, put your own CSS into. There's a, a plugin called My Custom CSS. I've just started playing around with that a little bit. It does seem to work. Uh, I don't know if there's any potential gotchas on using these things that certain themes might have some incompat uh, maybe other plugins might be incompatible with, with this approach. Um, you know, I don't know for certain if there's theme developers in the room that have an opinion on that, perhaps we can get that at the end of the talk. But there are ways to at least make some custom CSS changes by easy, either using uh, the built-in CSS, uh, custom CSS tab, or using a plugin. But that does not, um, it's not a complete solution. It won't support changing the template files, uh, those PHP files, which uh, control the, uh, you know, things like um, uh, how many widget areas you have on your, uh, you can have on your screen, or other aspects of page layouts. Um, you can't do that with CSS alone, you need PHP to do that. 
You can also directly modify the code in the theme. And for those of you who have been, um, start something up here. Hold on a second. How many of you have a locally hosted um, installation of WordPress? Quite a few. Those of you that don't, it's very, very useful. When it's up. So, for those of you who have ventured down here already, in when you install whatever thing you have installed, there's one of these uh, sub menus here under Appearances Editor, and you can actually go in and see. I'm going to go to the 2012 theme itself. Here's all the PHP files and you select one and it will show the code over here. You actually can go into the code, and if you know what you're doing, um, you can make changes right there in the, um, uh, directly in the code, you know, using this editor function. You can do the same thing with the style sheet. There's some real drawbacks to that, though. Because for example, uh, it can be effective, again, if you really know what you're doing, but it is risky. It's easy to make mistakes that, at the very least, can sort of screw you up temporarily or just outright break the theme. And if you haven't sort of been careful of keeping track of what you have changed, uh, you could be in trouble getting back to where you were in the first place. You might have to reinstall the theme, lose your theme settings, and things like that. Um, the other important thing is an update to the theme you know, say a new version of the theme comes out, is available, you want to apply the update. As we all know, it's important to <clears throat> update your code for security reasons and bug fix reasons and for no other reason. Um, and uh, so you should be doing that. You'll have to reapply the customizations, assuming you know what they were. You actually kept track of them and uh, know where to put them back in. So the last option here, is the low risk, most powerful solution, and that's creating your own child theme. So, big, big building up to this. So, essentially, the child theme allows you to take an existing theme, which is called the, the parent theme, leverage the best parts of it, and extend or modify the parent theme in literally any way that you can imagine. So, think about a theme that you like and a way you'd like to change it. You can potentially do that with a child theme, again, if you know uh, the tools of the trade, PHP and CSS, very well. As a starting point, the child theme essentially inherits all of the CSS styling and the PHP templates from the parent theme. So if you didn't add a lick of code to a child theme, you just created the basic sort of skeleton for it, it would behave in the exact same way that the parent theme but then you can modify the behavior of the parent theme by adding code to the child theme. The code in the child theme is going to override the um, complementary code, if you will, in the parent theme uh, with one exception, the functions.php file. I'm getting a little ahead of the story here, but basically the idea is, um, you know, think of um, you really like a book and you just want to change a few paragraphs in the book uh, the child theme allows you to do that without altering the original book and just allows you to essentially cut and paste um, things in your local version of it, and that would be the one displayed to whoever's viewing the book. Not sure that's the best analogy. But <clears throat> in any case, why do you want to create a child theme in the first place? Well, in cases where the set settings in the parent theme don't provide the control you need, which again is uh, in the case of most themes, there's very limited settings. Child themes are the most powerful and the safest way to do that. It's really repeating the earlier point. 
It's also the fastest way to create several variations of an existing theme. Say you want to um, show a client several different variations of a site. They're all based on the same thing, but they have uh, certain changes that could be different from one version to another, such as a background color or a font or any number of other things. You can essentially create clones of those child themes once you sort of know what you're doing and know what part of the code that you need to change and be able to flip from one to another very quickly and easily uh, without having to sort of mess around with, you know, uncommenting and or recommenting certain parts of the code. It's also a great way to start learning uh, WordPress theme development if you're interested in that. And it's what the pros do. Uh, for example, a lot of theme frameworks like Genesis and Builder utilize a parent-child theme architecture. You buy into sort of the general architecture, they give you the base theme, and then you, uh, you can purchase one or more of their child themes, and uh, you know, uh, they all run on the same uh, basic platform. So, okay, let's get down to the meat of it. I want to create my child theme. How do I do that in three easy steps? Well, the example we're going to show you is um, uh, in this uh, in this part is really a very simple one. We're going to only change some CSS styling. We're not going to get into a lot of uh, you know um, you know really complex stuff about creating new page uh, templates or whatnot, which you would have to do with uh, by writing PHP, but this. This will give you a sense of what you need to do in order to be able to do any of those other things beyond what this just shows. So we're going to create a simple child theme that alters the styling of the 2012 theme. And we're going to apply a custom background to the content areas of the screen, which we saw, and force the text headings to be all uppercase. And that is all done via CSS, cascading style sheets. Does anybody not know what CSS is? Okay, good. So we don't have to explain that. So let's get, go forward with the example. So the very first thing you do is you create a subdirectory for the child theme files. So um, you create that in the WP content slash themes directory where WordPress is installed. You can name the subdirectory literally anything you want. Uh, typical practice is to name it after the parent theme and then add suffix dash child, but you don't need to do that. You can really call it anything. And uh, for example, if you're creating a child theme for 2012, you can call it 2012 dash child. Pretty simple. Now, in the in my case, I created this child theme, and it's called Blue 2012. I could have called it anything. I could have, could have called it George or Harry or Austin or whatever I wanted to, but I called it Blue 2012 is the theme directory name. So once I create that directory, I create a basic style.css file. You use a plain text editor. Um, I'm a Windows guy, so I use uh, something called Bluefish, which is a free uh, Utility, but there's a lot of them. A lot of them out there. You want to simply create and use a plain text editor to create in the initial file. You add a comment block at the top of the file, identifying at minimum the theme name and the so-called template. So the items up here. Here's a comment block in CSS. Starts with slash asterisk, ends with asterisk slash, and in between are comments. But um, WordPress uses these comments in a very important way. It uses the theme name to display the theme name on your appearance um, uh, theme screen and uses the template to say where are the PHP files that this child theme is going to refer to, essentially. This other information in here is not required, but it's typical to put it in because this will show up in your, uh, on that appearance theme screen. The description of the theme is what we do, when you click on details for a, a theme, display that description, show the author name, 
I'll have a link to your website if you like, and showing a version number as sort of a courtesy uh, as you're uh, uh, incrementing uh, into new versions. So at minimum, you need to have this, uh, the things identified in red here. The theme name can be anything you want. That will display again on that screen. The template name has to be the name of the subdirectory that the parent theme is contained in. So in this case, it's 2012. So these are a bunch of themes that got installed here. Here is where the 2012 theme is installed. It's in the 2012 subdirectory. So that's what I have to um, identify, sorry, um, in this template name here. The other thing that you want to do in this, um, in this basic style.css file is to put an import command in here, which will um, basically, uh, you can probably parse this out, it's saying, here's the location of the CSS file that I want to import into the child theme. So in this case, it's in the 2012 subdirectory. You have to go up one directory level, so that's what the dot dot takes you one up from where you are, which is in the blue, uh, the blue 2012 directory, and then go down into the 2012 subdirectory and style.css is the one that you want to pull in. So this is what I mean by you're essentially inheriting all that style, um, um, all that CSS code from the parent theme. And then the next step is to add your own styling uh, to either modify or add to the styling that's in uh, the original one. <coughs> so let's, I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. I've got actually some sample code on my website. So after you've added that, um, that code block, the comment block up here and the import statement, that's, uh, after that is where you add the particular CSS that you want to apply to style, um, uh, to appear as the styling in uh, the version of the theme that you're creating. So uh, here is the CSS uh, that applies to the site um, uh, the site here, and that's the background color. Oops, sorry. Um, the background color is, the, is the, that's the hex code for it. And then here's the CSS, which transforms all the headings into uppercase. And that's basically it in order to accomplish those two things that I just um, described. So after he's um, adding the custom code, you save the file, and you're done. After that, to test the child theme, you go to Appearance Themes. Assuming you've done everything right, the theme should appear in the list of available themes and Appearance Themes. And then you can activate that child theme, or review the results, and hopefully you get the result that you were, that you were aiming for. Optionally, um, you can then create a thumbnail image of the, of the child to display with the theme information. So capture a screenshot after you actually see what the result of what you've done is, um, and then uh, crop or resize the image to approximately the size that seems to be the standard, 600 by 450 pixels, and then save the image in a, in a file named screenshot.png in the child theme subdirectory. So now let's actually look at this code here. So forget the functions one for a second. But here's the screenshot <coughs> that I created after actually displaying the theme. More importantly, here's the style.css file. And this is the code that I added as part of the, uh, the example. Now there's some additional code down here which uh, changes the font. We'll get into that in just a second. But as far as simply making those two changes to, this, um, to that theme, that's, that's all the code I added. There's as much commenting there as there is code, so it's not a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. So, uh, actually, what I want to do is show you this in action now. Okay. So when I go to themes appearance, here is the screenshot that I took. Here is the um, title of it. Here is me <laughs> and the version number and. When I click on this, it's going to go to the author homepage, which is my website. And here is the brief description that I can put in there. Now, obviously, some descriptions can be a lot longer than that, and if you're doing a lot of changes to the child team, you should do more than what I put in there. And, um, and that's it. So I can switch back and forth between the original theme and the 2012 theme. Well, let's just, see, let's just look at what it's actually looking that way as opposed to just the screenshot. And there it is. Now, um, you may be thinking that, wow, well, couldn't I have done that in the parent theme? The answer is no. The parent theme allows you to change the background that appears around the outside of, the, of this container but it does not allow you to change this, and it does not give you the option um, to force uppercase in all the, all the headings as I've done here. Um, you could go through and manually, sort of every time you put in an H1 header or an H2 header or whatnot, you can manually force uppercase if you knew how to do it in each individual post, but um, it would not apply consistently across the whole site in the way that this is done. So now if I change back to 2012, refresh, and it's back to the way it was before. So I haven't changed the original theme at all. I've only created this new code for the child theme and just put it in the right place and refer it up to the uh, parent theme for the um, CSS file and the templates, the PHP templates. Any questions about that? <coughs> Yeah, I, I, they are not necessarily the, the same. In fact, on, an, on another child theme when I was playing around with it, I don't know, it was 2010 or 2011, I made that same change and then applied it to everything except uh, the title on the, oh wait, yeah, sorry. It, it applied it to everything but the title on the home page. I'm not sure how to answer that question. <laughs> but to answer your first one, <laughs> that's the one I can't answer. Yeah. I can say for sure that it will not always, it, that's the hardest part about this sometimes, is knowing exactly what element that you need to apply the styling to. And that's sort of a whole nother discussion. Not call, but you to right, right. And in fact, I don't remember exactly how I found that the, um, whoops, got the wrong one here. <coughs> you notice the styling uh, for the background. I use this 
element here, dot site. I don't even remember how I found that. It's not obvious. I mean, you would have, I, actually, I think I do. I went in and actually just looked at the original code um, and saw that a background color was being applied to that element there. And so I used that and while I worked. So that's, a, that's your container, it's not the container. <coughs> right, right. That's it's the not the background. I'm looking for myself, the site, the container has Right. Right, so you have to know how that's identified in that particular thing. I, this is this is the first time I've done this particular one, so I don't I don't know. I mean, this is still relatively new to me, but um, it's cool anyway. So, so let's um, let's expand this. So I basically in that first example, um, I walked you through how to do these parts. Now there's another part down here where I applied this this font family called Metal Mania, which happens to be a Google um, web font. And in order to do that, I had to actually modify the functions.php file. How did I know to do that? Um, I I just did a search on the web and I found somebody that had a great code example and I used that. So. How did I do that? I'm jumping ahead here. So, with a the trial theme, you can modify the behavior of the parent theme, how the pages are laid out, and what the content displays in a particular area of the page, which uh, you would need to do this by actually modifying um, or adding to the template files. So, there's several methods to do that. You can either override an existing template file. So say you want to just change whatever, you know, lots of times the, the basic WordPress themes have powered by WordPress in the footer. Um, you would simply copy the footer.php file from the parent theme down over to the child theme subdirectory, and then you can find the right place in that code. And again, that's the trick, finding the right place and knowing what you're doing with PHP. And, and change whatever, um, wherever that's displayed. So this is good for making minor tweaks to a template, uh, and it's very common practice to basically do what I said, to copy the parent themes page tem um, template file to the child subdirectory. Um, if you want to do more extensive or complex changes, you can also create brand new template files in the child theme subdirectory. Um, or add a functions.php template file to the uh, child theme, which WordPress loads in addition to the functions.php file that's in the parent directory. So this is the one exception where the child theme's template file doesn't override the parent, <coughs> it actually adds to it. And that's what we did in this particular example. So. So the example that I use here is apply the Metal Mania Google Web Font to all headings. And I use the plain text editor to create a new file called functions.php. And I added this code to that file and saved the file in the child theme subdirectory. So here's the code that I added. Here's the web font. And you, if you're familiar at all with Google Web Fonts, when you go and find one, it will give you the you know, uh, uh, a pointer to it, basically a URL pointing to that font. And you're creating this function called load fonts. Uh, and you can load multiple ones. I'm just doing one in this case. And then uh, followed by this action down here. I don't understand how this code works. I'll be absolutely honest with you. Uh, I don't know PHP well. All I know is I saw this, I tried it, and it worked. Um, and then I added the following code at the end of the, um, at the style.css file, which we saw when we were actually looking at the code. So you assign the font family metalmania, which has been loaded via the functions up here, and voila. So if you have more questions about um, template files, I'm not sure I'm the best person to answer them, but I'll try if you want to talk to me after, after class here. But I'm, I'm running out of time here, so 
That's good for me. <laughs> um, oops. So as I said, we're just um, sort of skimming the surface of everything there is to know about theme development in general and even um, child themes in particular. There are some, uh, some specific documentation on wordpress.org um, about this. Um, there are books on theme development. Um, I've mentioned a couple here that are, have a lot of stuff on theme development, including one of our uh, co-organizers, <coughs> Mr. Freeman. And this book here um, has a section on child themes, which if you're not really a theme developer and just want to sort of reinforce some stuff that we've talked about tonight, this might be enough. It's a real big, big book, covers a lot of stuff. And if you want to learn the fundamentals of HTML and CSS and PHP, there's different places to do that. Um, I've listed a couple of sites here that have some simple tutorials and code examples. Um, and you can go out there and look at those. Any final questions? Yes, sir. Do you have to load the font locally first, or do you just uh, pull it from the site? You just pulled it from the site, and I know there's different ways to, to do it. You can actually download the fonts to your to your local um, to your local site. Um, I was just using that as an example of how to grab it off directly off Google. So, yes, sir. Uh, you loaded your child theme as a subdirectory in the themes folder, as opposed to a, a fellow directory in the themes folder. Well. Uh, and uh, I usually do it as not a subdirectory, but just in the themes folder with each child theme that I. Oh, and I'm wondering if I just did, so. I never saw it as a subdirectory before. So well, each each theme here has its own directory within the themes folder. I, just, I think it's just the terminology. No, no, I, I think I'm, I'm. I guess I'm gathering that it can be done either way. In other words, I'll have 2012 under the themes folder, within the themes folder, and a separate folder for child of 2012. And perhaps it's the way I learned it, maybe best practices as a subdirectory. I just didn't know it would be better or different that way. Uh, I'm a little confused. Maybe I'll have to I'll catch you after. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I'm not sure what you're saying here because. I believe either way does work. Yeah. Um, I tend to prefer having them as siblings rather than nested, but it's they're that's not the nest, word. siblings. Not nested. Yeah. Okay. These are siblings. Blue twenty twelve and twenty twelve are sibling directories. But the child, uh, the child and the parent actually is siblings. Is I guess the way I've been doing it. Yeah, that's what. Yes. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what <laughs> Yeah, it's just a terminology thing. It, it's not in a subdirectory under 2012. Uh, okay, gotcha. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'll say thank you very much. If you want to learn more about WordPress, <coughs> um, I, I do live in classroom training. Um, I don't think I'm a competitor to the other one events that are being uh, offered because um, I'm, a, first of all, up in New Hampshire and these are multi day courses as opposed to workshops uh, for the most part. So if you're interested, give me a shout. <coughs> That's it.